Hi, very good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, Microsoft 365 application uh, tips and tricks uh, for this morning. Uh, so as part of this uh, workshop, uh, we will be looking through some of the uh, main apps uh, for Microsoft 365 education, especially those applications that will be uh, useful for us in terms of our teaching and learning. Um, so I think that um, I'm just assuming here that uh, some of you have perhaps been using Microsoft 365 um, and uh, some of you are perhaps very new to Microsoft 365. So I'm going to start from the very basic of using uh, Microsoft 365. And then uh, for those of you who have already started using it, you might be familiar with some of the uh, features of the application. Uh, so there will be some other um, features that perhaps uh, will be new to you for this morning. Yeah. Um, so those that you have already used before, just bear with me uh, because the idea is to give more of an introduction basis to our participants. And um, uh, we are going to move from introductory to something that is more advanced later on as well. OK, uh, so as part of this workshop, uh, let me just give you a little bit of overview about our program for this morning. Uh, so we are going to look at um, uh, Microsoft Teams. That will be the heart of the uh, Microsoft 365 education in terms of teaching and learning. So you can see that a large time is um, dedicated for Microsoft Teams, uh, which is about two and a half hours, because I estimate that Teams is so rich in content and they're so rich in features that it will take at least uh, two and a half hours to actually fully embrace and uh, discover the application just on Microsoft Teams. And then we're going to have a short uh, break. Then we're going to resume with Microsoft OneNote. And then uh, we are going to proceed with uh, Microsoft Suite. Um, so those of us uh, here who have not heard about uh, Microsoft Suite, uh, I've introduced this to many of my students and they have forgotten what is Microsoft PowerPoint. And the reason is because they are so much into using Microsoft Sway, it's more like a 3D application uh, where you are able to do your presentation. So they're so much into that that they have um, no longer or very much minimized using Microsoft PowerPoint. So uh, those of you are hearing it for the first time, then we will go through this um, as well, okay? Um, so just to share with you, uh, these are some of the possibilities that you can get from Microsoft. Um, all of these uh, professional certifications. Um, so you can actually apply for this uh, professional certification. Um, and each of these um, has a professional fee in which you have to pay. You have to sit for an exam. Um, so when I actually got certified, um, from all these areas, um, each of these batch itself takes a full two days training, um, nine to five. And this is another nine to five, nine to five, nine to five. And on top of that, you have a two hours um, online training as well. Um, so your screen is locked and then you have a ventilator to come and, and monitor the whole test center. So uh, once you are uh, past the test, then you get uh, certified. Um, otherwise, you will not be able to uh, get a certification. So those of you are interested to get certification in this area, you can let me know and I can share with you some of the details. So you will have to complete this um, four areas, uh, PowerPoint, Word, uh, Access and Expert, and then you get this badge, which is called the Microsoft Office Master Badge. And all of these are, are, pl are practically issued by Microsoft. And these batches um, accompany the certificate. Uh, so these are the certificates they will give you. Uh, these are actually gold-plated, yeah? Uh, gold-plated, so they will post it to your home, actually. Um, so it's not just a soft copy. You also receive a hard copy. And the hard copy are gold-plated. So you can see that uh, these are the certificates that are directly from Microsoft Corporation. And you will get it. And, you know, you even have a, a verification code here. So you want to verify whether the... Uh, trainer or the person has really uh, achieved the certification, you can even check it through Microsoft website with this uh, verification code. So similarly as the batch, 
you have this uh, four certificates that accompanies, and then you have the uh, Microsoft Office Specialist Master Certificate. And the Master Certificate also states uh, what are the four modules that you have completed here, uh, when you have completed, and the verification uh, uh, code that comes along with it. Yeah. So if you want to um, try to uh, get the certification, um, you can let me know and I can share with you how to go about it. Currently, the each of the module is about uh, 600 ringgit each of the module. Uh, previously, uh, there was a discount about 200 ringgit, 250 ringgit, but now 600 ringgit. Um, so there are some test centers that has voucher as well. So you can look into that. Yeah. So I'm just sharing with you. Now, this is something that is a little bit more attainable. This is free. OK, and uh, you are encouraged to actually um, go into the Microsoft website. Uh, there are a series of videos uh, for you to actually view it. And um, there is a simple quiz for you to complete. Uh, once you have completed that series of videos, you are able to get this uh, Microsoft uh, Innovative Educator Certification. Uh, so this is a free certificate. And on top of this certificate, you are also able to complete a module on uh, Microsoft Sway, uh, Microsoft OneNote, Microsoft Teams, and here you are able to get individual certificates. So you can see that this is from Microsoft Educator Center. So if you want to get a cert like this, then you have to go to this um, website called Microsoft Educator Center, and you can register an account there, and um, you can try uh, the complete this uh, modules and then you can get this certificate. Yeah, so you can see that each of the modules is about one hour uh, average and then you complete the quiz and then you can get this um, certification there. OK, all right. Uh, so this morning we are going to start with uh, Microsoft Teams uh, and then Microsoft Teams, you could see that uh, there's a very nice cliche to the uh, software. It says, uh, one platform to rule them all. <laughs> so it's something similar as the Lord of the Rings where you have one ring to rule them all. So this is similar to Microsoft Teams. Um, you have one platform to rule them all. OK, and these are some of the features of uh, Microsoft Teams. Now, what is so unique about Microsoft Teams that it can function as both, um, it has a functionality as a WhatsApp, and it also has functionality as a uh, online meeting function. So you can do two in one. So for example, if you want to have an online meeting, we use applications such as Google Meet. And then if you want to have instant messaging, then you use um, WhatsApp, where else Microsoft Teams has both functionalities into one. So it can function two in one. So you don't have to create a uh, WhatsApp group just for the class of students. Um, the group that you have created here can already be accessed by the students and they can also use it as an instant messaging in there. Uh, so this is the one thing that is very powerful about Microsoft Teams. It can function both as an instant messaging app and you can also conduct meetings two in one into this. So you can see that it has ability to communicate, um, you can collaborate, linking it with many applications within Microsoft and also external. Uh, and one thing nice is you can really customize your application and make it really personal to you. OK, and that enables you to work with a certain level of confidence as well. So you can see that these are some of the main uh, features which we will be going through later on. And here you can see that what Microsoft uh, 365 is capable, Microsoft uh, Teams. 365 is capable where you are able to customize and have different different applications together all into one. So all this we will be looking through and learning later on. OK, so let's um, dive into Microsoft Teams and see uh, what is Microsoft Teams all about. OK, so first thing is uh, we need to do is uh, you need to have access to uh, your 365 platform. OK, so um let me just on the let me just share the screen here okay so you need to first um uh access your microsoft online account so you can just go to google and uh, uh google microsoft online okay and then you are able to come to here microsoft 365 login 
So this is a login that all our UM staff can access as well. All right. Um, so just click Microsoft 365 login. Okay. And then um, here you are able to go into your Microsoft 365 login account. So if you are the first time here, uh, when you click it, they will ask you to sign in using your username and password. So you just use the same password as how um, you have for your UM mail, uh, our emails, right? So use the same password. Uh, and then for the username, you can uh, use the same email as well. The only difference is you have uh, the word 365. So you can see here um, my email address. So usually I don't have 365, but to sign in into my UM account, I need to put at 365.um.edu.my uh, and then you can use the same password as your UM mail. So once you have signed in there, you are able to come to this um, application. So here is where you are able to access all the uh, Microsoft 365 applications here. Okay. Oh, wow. So we got about 21 participants now so far. Okay. So earlier it was around, I think, 14 or 15. Now suddenly there's so many. Okay. All right. Welcome to the all the new ones. Yeah. Uh, welcome to this workshop. Okay. So now we are into Microsoft 365 portal. OK, um, so in Microsoft 365 portal, you can see that if you click here, this uh, grid here, you are able to see that these are some of the main applications in Microsoft 365. Now, if you click all apps, um, you are able to see um, a list of all the applications that we have under Microsoft 365. So for this morning, we are going to look at Microsoft Teams. So you can find for Microsoft Teams in this list here. So you have Microsoft Teams. So click Microsoft Teams and it's going to open uh, Microsoft Teams in here. So once you have it here, um, you can also download it as an application. I will show you later how can we do that. Yeah. So now you can see that um, Microsoft Teams is already open now. Uh, and if you are using Teams uh, quite a bit, then you are expected to have uh, quite a number of groups here, as you can see here, the list of groups that I have here. Uh, but if you are new to Teams, then this part will be practically empty. OK, so now we are going to first thing learn how to create a team. OK. Uh, one of the difficulties in terms of um, actually training using this uh, application is because some of the terms are similar to the application itself. So we say create a team and it's Microsoft team. So it's using the same term, which is teams. So sometimes it can be a bit confusing. So I'm going to give an example as in when I say create a team is similar to creating a group within WhatsApp. OK. So now when you create a team, as in creating a group within WhatsApp, so you create a team. So the first thing is you can see at the bottom here, you have join or create a team. So I'm going to click this one, join and create a team. And then you have many of the other options here. So I'm going to click the first one, which is create a team. So this is similar to creating a WhatsApp group. And I'm going to click create team. OK, so you have many options here. Um, it's just that they provided uh, many options here, but more or less the functions are the same. Um, so I will always uh, use the first one, which is uh, class one. Uh, but here, if you want to use PLC, for example, you can. But uh, sometimes the uh, applications like OneNote are limited in feature because uh, OneNote is an uh, uh, application that educators can collaborate with their students, right? So. Uh, for example, if you were to use PLC and all this, there are some limitations. But if you want the uh, full feature, then I will suggest you to click class, okay, which you'll get the full feature of Microsoft Teams. Okay, and here is where you give your class a name, right? Um, so what 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 name you like to give your class? So this you can label it after a course code. For example, if you are teaching a, a course, you want to put a course code, you want to put a course name or simply anything else um, that you want. OK, so in this case, I am going to put maybe uh, blended learning. Blended learning with um, Microsoft 365. 
Okay, let's call this group Blended Learning with Microsoft 365. And I'm going to click Next. So you can see that now Microsoft is uh, creating the team. Okay, now there are two ways you can do this. You can start to add your students into the group. Okay, so you can manually type their name here. If they have a Microsoft 365 account, their name will appear here. Okay, so for example, I see some of our uh, lecturers here who are in this workshop this morning, your names are here. So let me try to put, okay, maybe a Renuka. So if Renuka has a 365 account, then you will see that uh, Renuka's name appears here. Okay, and then I see there is Goi Fang. Okay, so if Goi Fang has a, a 365 account, then your name appears here. So you can actually uh, put their name here and then they will be added into the group. Okay, um, so they, this is the longer way longer way the uh shall i say the more uh like a lazy way <laughs> hey sorry the more hard working way not lazy way this is the hard working way of where you add your students one by one huh? this is the more hard working way but there is a more faster or shall i say a more lazy way and uh i will show you how to do that yeah so if you if you don't want to add your student manually here like this you can just click skip Okay, but if you're hardworking, you can add them one by one. Uh, otherwise, there is a shortcut for this. Okay, so I'm going to click skip. Um, and then here you can see that uh, the group has already been created. The teams has already been created. So welcome to Blended Learning with Microsoft 365. Okay, so now what you can see that on the top here, on the top here, you have many tabs. You have posts, you have files. Okay, and then um, here you have a uh, home page. Okay, and then you have class notebook. Okay, and then you have assignments. Okay, and then you have many other tabs. So all these tabs are very, very useful for you. And here, when you click the plus sign, you are able to see that how you can add many other applications under Microsoft 365. So this is what it means by you having the ability to customize. So you can even add PowerPoint, you can add SharePoint, any other PDF files. So if you want to store any of your PowerPoint, your PDF file, or any of the Word documents, you want to store it in Microsoft Teams, uh, you can also do that. And there are also many other applications here, right? Um, and all these are applications that helps in terms of our teaching and learning as well. So you can look through this and uh, maybe Google online and see uh, many of these applications are free. Uh, and then you can look through this and see which one that you like and uh, uh, you can experiment with it. So one of the popular ones you have like Evernote, these are quite popular as well. And then there are many others um, popular applications. So all of these are customizable and all of these are able to link to uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, so this is a very big advantage and it makes Teams very, very interesting because it's a uh, one-stop platform. So if you customize, everything is linked and everything is available here, all under the steps here. Okay. So the next one now we are going to learn uh, is about how to create um, channels. Okay. So channels are basically uh, more like groups. Okay. More like um, creating uh, private groups or creating groups within the Teams itself. So you have a Microsoft Team account here. So now we want to create channel as in groups within the Teams itself. So now I have a team called Blended Learning with Microsoft 365. Now I want to create a um, channel for it. So how do we create a um, channel? Okay, so if you see, for example, now you have general. This is a channel by itself. So that means every student, everyone, their chat, anything that you have uh, talked about, everything is available here in general. Now, if you want to create a, a, a private channel, so I'm going to click this uh, three dots here, and then I'm going to click add channel, add channel. So when you click add channel, Okay, so now let's say that you have a class and you want to divide it by weeks, for example, week one, 
week two, week three, week four until week 14. So you can also do that. So for example, week one, okay, and then you can put maybe the date today, um, 18, 1, 20, 23. Okay, so, oh, sorry, they don't support um, these characters. So 18, 1, Okay, and then 2023. Okay, so for example, you can even divide this according to the class dates that you have. Week 1, 18 January. Okay, now you see this, you have two privacy settings here. One, everyone has access to the team, the channel. And then here is private. That means only specific students or only specific people have access to this channel. So this is one thing that is quite unique because you can create a group, uh, which is a team, right? And within that teams, you can create channel. So that means you want certain people to be in certain groups only. Uh, then you can put private, okay? Otherwise, I'm going to put standard where everyone can view. Everyone can view and everyone can do activity together. So let's experiment on this. Let's say that I want to create week one, uh, and the class is today. So I'm going to put standard. Everyone on this Teams group has access to it. So I'm going to click Add. And then what happens is you can see that the channel is now created. So you can see week 1, 18, 1. So whenever you want to do any activities or any chats or anything, then you can click this. And then you can start your activities here. If you want to go to general, then you go to general back. Okay, otherwise you can go to week 1. Okay, so you can keep on creating more channels according to every week, week one, week two, week three, week four. Okay, this is more of a general basis. Now, let's say that if I want to create a private channel, okay, so maybe I'm going to go here and I'm going to click add channel. Okay, now maybe I'm going to put group one. So let's say that I am doing a class, I'm teaching a class, and I want to separate my students according to groups. So you already form a group. So group one, okay, how many members? Four, five members. Group two, four, five members. Group three, four, five members. So let's say you have already assigned each student according to groups. And now you want them to work only within this group. That means all other students cannot see. Only you as a lecturer can see. What are they chatting or what resources are they putting inside the teams and all this? Only you can see it and you don't want other students to see it. Only the group members can access and only you can access. So how do we do it? So you can put, for example, group one members. Okay, now this privacy here, I have to change it to private. Private. So you see private, specific teammates have access. So only specific people have access. So I'm going to um, I'm going to click create. Okay, and then what happens now? This is where you have to add students that is going to be private members. So that means in the teams, you already have all the members. And in the channel, I'm going to add specific people that only have access to this channel. Uh, other people would not have access. So for example, I'm going to add, ah, okay, maybe Fariza is here. So maybe I put uh, Fariza. Hey, why Fariza got no name here? Or oh, maybe students lah. Fariza is not a student. <laughs> okay, so let me put something else. Okay, uh, so this is where you can add your students one by one. They have a 365 account. You can put your students name one by one. Okay, and then um, you can add them. Okay, once you already add them, Okay, then what happens is you see that there is a padlock here. Uh, so this padlock means that this is a private uh, group. That means it's a private membership. Uh, so nobody else can access except you and the members that you have added into this group. Okay, so this is how we create a public channel. And this is how we create a private channel. Are you all able to follow so far? Everything is okay. So we have learned so far how to access Microsoft Teams through Microsoft 365. And um, we have learned how to create a team. And we have also learned um, how to create, uh, I mean, we have explored in terms of the tabs uh, within the Teams. Okay, for example, the general tab, uh, what can you do? What are the sort of functionalities 
uh, in terms of tabs available for you. And also we have uh, explored in terms of uh, general channel and private channel. Okay, so these are the things that we have learned so far. All right. Okay, so now the next one that we are going to look at now is we are going to test um, some of the chat uh, functionalities here. So, for example, now, if you see the uh, Microsoft here, okay, uh, we have a lot of tabs up here. So you have people, uh, you have chat, you have reactions, then you have app. Okay, so we, you, we're going to start uh, playing around with the chat first. So if you can click the chat function here, and that opens up a window here. All right, so now in that um, chat function, let's try uh, different, different things, okay? So first thing is in the chat function here, um, you will notice that there are many uh, functionalities to the chat here. So if you see at the bottom here, you can also have emoji, you also have GIF. GIF is something that um, is a motion picture. So a, a, a picture is not a still picture, is a picture that has motion movements so you can even play with gifs and all this so let's try with the first one okay let's look at emojis ah so when you click emojis you will see that there's a lot of emoji here lot of emoji so you click this one okay so you have lots of emoji here right so can you all put an emoji that best represents your emotion this morning which emoji that best represents your emotion this morning let's say that this one okay click here okay and then you can enter which emoji that best represents your emotion so let me go through these and say okay what what emoji we have here so there are many many emojis here okay let me try this so you can click this and then you can click enter okay can you all try it and see which emoji that best represents your feelings this morning? <laughs> so there's something, there's a star here. Okay. Ah, there you go. There is a uh, hi there. Okay. So there is clapping there. Okay. Then you got a nice little cute sunshine. And then, yeah, you have waving. So you can see that. This emoji is not a still emoji. Yeah? It, it's not something that is fixed. Uh, this emoji are uh, motion. So you can see there's some movement, there's some, uh, you know. So it, it creates a, a, a form of engagement as well. Uh, so it's not something that is still. Like our WhatsApp emojis are all still. Um, Google Meet emojis are all still. Whereas these emojis are the type that has motions, movement inside. So... Uh, that makes it a bit unique compared to all the other applications that we have. Okay, so we can see that all our friends are trying here. So you have different, different uh, types of emojis here. Okay, very nice. Okay, now let's try GIF. So if you click GIF, yeah, GIF. Okay, so GIF, what do you have GIF? So GIF, you can type a picture that has a motion. Okay, so GIF, maybe I put sleepy. Sleepy GIF. Okay, let's see what is the sleepy GIF here. Ah, okay, so this is this morning. Sleepy GIF. So you can put this GIF here, and then you can see that it's a picture that comes up like a like a motion here. And then um, uh, you can play around with this as well. So can we try GIF? So click GIF. Okay, and then here, one thing good is you, you can search for any GIFs. Okay, you want to put sleepy, for example, or you want to put typing. Uh, you want to put typing. So now is the time. So you can tell your students, okay, now is the time that I'm going to give you uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes to go into groups. Uh, this is the work that you must do. Okay, then you're going to start typing. So you put typing. Uh, so all of you are going to be like this. Uh, you see like the cat, the cat that is typing. Uh, so the students all are going to do like, ah, see, so, so many nice GIFs here. Okay, so you have different good morning GIF. Okay, and then, wow, what is this? This one is some, <laughs> this one is some lightning uh, thing that is happening here. Okay, and then, ah, so this one is already sleeping already, yeah? Okay, and then, yeah, jumping like this. Okay, then you have the minions here. Okay, you have different, different GIFs here. Okay, and then you have, uh, 
okay somebody that is like this okay i'm so hungry okay and then <laughs> this one is also already flat yeah on a sunset okay so this is something that um, you can play around also with your students okay and you can let them know so it's an icebreaker lah. sometimes you can start a class with an icebreaker in the morning okay how are you all this morning you know uh you know uh, can you find for me a gif okay that uh, best expresses your emotions this morning for example okay so they find for example uh, emotions that they are sleepy uh, they are hungry okay and all these kind of emotions and sometimes when you are teaching them in between you can activate this uh gifs okay so you can see that ah i see nice this is uh, by uh aslina you see this is a nice uh gif as well right so you can even play around with this and it makes our students in a way engage and it gets them excited because the GIF here is basically more, uh, it's limitless. You can type anything you want here and then it appears. So you can even type smile, for example. Okay, so sometimes you can guide your students, you know, go to a GIF and type smile. Okay, and then find a GIF that best represents your smile this morning, for example. So they go and find smile. So this is the things that sometimes I do with my students as a very short um, ice breaking before we start every class um, so you can go here and you know you can find here uh, my internet seems to be a, a little bit slow this morning so you can see that uh, some of the things are are loading here but uh, with a strong internet then you can get it very fast okay so these are some of the things that we can do in terms of GIF okay now uh, what we can do is you can also just use the normal um, chat functions okay so let me uh, put a uh, question here. Um, are you excited to learn about Teams this morning? Okay, so let me put here a question here. Are you excited to learn about Teams this morning? So can you all respond uh, to my chat, please? That means uh, yes or no, you know, or any other answers that you have for that? Of course, um, yeah, so you have of course there, good. So I excited to learn about Teams this morning. So this is a normal uh, chat function, uh, normal chat function that we're using. Okay, so I can see like, uh, wow, <laughs> you all are already using GIFs already. Uh, so you can, <laughs> you got Biden here and all this. Okay, yes, okay, then you have, yes, okay, then you have, Okay, somebody, somebody that has a jeep like this. Okay, Kusaira. Okay, you have a jeep like this. So now, what you can do is you can even um, give a reaction to this. Okay, now for example, uh, you have all this jeep. I can even give a reaction. So now you see, for example, this is something a bit unique. So you have yap yap, for example. So I like this comment yap yap. So I'm going to give maybe a thumbs up. Ah, so now you can look through your friends' comments here and see which one that you like the most. Okay, which one you like the most. So now, for example, I like this one. I am going to give it a thumbs up. Okay, so then you have a thumbs up. So now one of the best thing about this is when you go to the thumbs up, you are able to also see which student has given a thumbs up. Okay, so for example, you see, for example, now I got four thumbs up here. So I got Zurina, I got Suhaili, Renuka, and myself. So now let me give uh, uh, another uh, type of question here, right? Uh, what type, what type of fruits do you like to eat? Okay, let's say I'm asking my student, uh, I'm just giving a general question here. What type of fruits do you like to eat? So can you respond to me? Uh, what kind of fruits? Just one type, one type of fruit. They are the your most favorite food. So, what is the most favorite food that you like to eat? Ah, so you can see Izura has put a mango steam there. Suhaili has put uh watermelon. Renuka is a durian. Okay, and then Posaira says durian. Okay, then you have apple, and then you have yifang durian. Okay. So now you can even tell your students, okay, now looking at your friend's response here, okay, can you give me a thumbs up? Which of your friends respond here you like the most? 
Okay, which is your favorite food and which one that you like the most? So can you give a thumbs up? Okay, so now for example, for Saira, I'm going to give a thumbs up here. Okay, so who else here? Okay, then there's another thumbs up here. So I'm going to give Dorian a thumbs up here. Okay, this is also my favorite. So there's a pineapple here. Wow, this one got so many. Got pineapple, got orange, got, got apple. Uh, eh, sorry, this one is what? Tomatoes. There's tomatoes and all this. Yeah? Dragon fruit and all this. Ah, okay. Lah, this one got more variety. So I'll give a thumbs up. See, so many people suddenly got six. So as a, as a lecturer, you can even those uh, you can even do something as simple as this. You post a question here, okay, and then you can ask your um uh, uh class uh, your students to actually vote. So you don't have to create a separate uh, poll. You don't have to create a separate survey. Uh, so something as simple as this. I just ask you a question here, and then I can ask you, okay, among your favorite fruits here, which one did you like? do you like the most so you can see that many of our uh, lecturers here they like this kind of fruits you got pineapple and many others so not just one type of fruit uh, different types of fruit and you can see that here if i hover my mouse over it um, i can see that there are seven uh, lecturers who likes this particular post and who are they okay so i have aslina izura uh, ifang and all now you can even take this one step further okay so this one seems to have seven people that voted okay kusaira uh, could you share with us why did you vote for this uh, particular answer for example so then kusaira can start sharing okay then maybe you have another one okay renuka can you share with us why did you vote for this particular answer so they can start sharing now another thing you can do is you can see which one that has no no answer no answer nobody likes okay so god so highly nobody so highly nobody likes it apple nobody likes guava so instead of telling nobody likes maybe you can ask okay hazreel uh you like guava can you share with us why do you like guava okay then hazreel can start sharing so you can see that uh, the tools that we are using within Microsoft Teams actually can help you in terms of the teaching and learning process. So it is a very simple interface. Uh, it is not a very complicated interface. So it helps you in a way uh, to facilitate the teaching and learning. So you can play with uh, emoticons, you can play with GIFs. And the, one of the best things here is that you can even uh, react. Uh, you can even react. So you can just hover over this and you can react. Now, another one of the best things that you can do here is uh, I can also pin a conversation. Okay, uh, for example, I see Fariza. Okay, Fariza, well, Fariza's one seems to be very popular. Got seven and then got somebody put a, a, a laughing icon here. Okay, one shock icon here also, somebody surprised. Okay, so this seems to be a very interesting um, answer that everyone seems to be uh, liking it and, and reacting to it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to center my class teaching uh, and I'm going to spend some time on this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to pin this. So I'm going to click this three uh, dots here, which provides you with more option. Okay, and now you can pin. You can pin this uh, conversation. So here what happens is this conversation is now pinned here. So you can see that I've already pinned. Now, anyone who actually posts after this, uh, the message that is pinned is going to be here at the top. So you can see, for example, now uh, Fariza's message has already been pinned. So if I were to um, scroll it anywhere, if I were to scroll anything, right, uh, this message will not run because it has been pinned to the top of the page here, right? So this is something that you can do as well. So you can pin um chats on top here and let's say students who join in late into the class so you can tell them okay uh for example uh, 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 uh kong okay kong you join the class late okay uh welcome to the class right so we are talking about the types of fruits here so look at the chat that i have pinned so click on the chat that i pinned on the right and then you can see that this is the picture or this is the post that we are talking about right now and offer your um a perception or offer your point of view about this uh, so students who are late uh, can also come in otherwise they will get lost and think what is actually happening and what actually are you talking so you can even pin here now on top of that 
you can also hover about uh, the chat and you can reply. You can click, for example, reply, reply. Okay, so you can click reply. Now I can reply on this chat. Excellent. Answer. So you can see now I am actually replying directly on Fariza's chat, which is excellent answer. So this gives a form of affirmation to each student. So you can affirm each student's answer. Okay, so if they answered right, you can put, okay, good answer. Yes, you're right. Uh, no, okay, uh, please try again, for example. So you can also, uh, <laughs> so you can see that uh, Fariza has replied. Thank you, teacher. Don. Yeah, so students can also reply. Our students can also reply and you can reply. Now, let's say if you do a Q&A, right, you ask the students, okay, anything that you don't understand from the class so far, can you post a, a questions here? So some students are extrovert, uh, some students are introvert. So extrovert, they, they, they like to talk a lot, right? Uh, introvert, sometimes they're very scared to talk. So this is where you create a, a platform where they feel safe to ask you a question, you know. Um, so, for example, if you have any question, you can ask me now. Um, so, give them some time to, to type a question. So, you're going to type a question and then you can basically reply directly on that question. So, you can give a time where all students have time to actually uh, type a question and then you can reply on that. So, this is a very good, similar to our WhatsApp. So, you can see that they have improved. Last time, uh, we don't have this feature. Uh, now, Microsoft Teams has already upgraded and improved where you are able to pin the chat right on top here. And on top of that, you are also able to um, reply to each of the message. OK. All right. Boost of the boss baby. <laughs> what is this? Huh? Boost of the boss baby. OK. <laughs> all right. This is the one. Yeah. OK. So, all right. Um, Let's go to the next one. Okay, now uh, here you also have the ability to uh, mute and unmute your students. Okay, now if I go to people, okay, and then you could see that uh, this is the list of all my students, right? Now let's say that any of our students were to accidentally unmute, okay, or accidentally um. Uh, forgot to turn off their microphone and all this. Now you can just hover over their name here. Okay, for example, Fariza, I just click the three dots here and then you can see mute participant, mute participant. But sometimes, uh, uh, but this is already gray is because uh, Fariza is already muted. Uh, if uh, Fariza's microphone is on, then this will be, uh, you have an option to mute it. Now, one of the things that you can do is uh, you can also disable the microphone. Let's say uh, you every time you mute uh, Fariza, some class sometimes for some naughty students, uh, uh, I mute uh, Fariza. Then after some time, Fariza open her mic again. And then you have to come back again and mute. So it's a bit of a distraction and hassle for you. So what you can do is you can disable her mic straight away uh, so that she cannot on the microphone throughout the class, right? And then here, if she owns the camera and you know and uh, uh, maybe she's doing something and she's not in front of the camera you know and you you can is even disable the camera here so that she's not able to on so this gives you more control as a lecturer uh, you have more control in terms of how do you manage the class okay so you have mute you have disable mic you have disable camera as well okay All right so uh, we have learned so far on how to basically create uh, emojis, how to create GIFs. Okay, GIFs are motion pictures, and uh, we have learned how to comment, um, how to pin comments, how to uh, reply to individual comments and all this. And then here we have just learned how to mute and uh, uh, students, how to disable their microphone, how to disable their um, cameras. Okay, so now. What we can do is now, um, I am going to show you, if we go back to um, Teams here. Okay, so this is your main Teams area. So now I can also start to upload files. Okay, so for example, I'm going to go Files. Okay, now I'm going to go to the Files tab. 
Now you have your class materials folder here. So if you click your class materials folder, this is where you can upload all the folders here. OK, but if you don't want to use this class material folder, you want to upload uh, a file separately outside here is up to you. You can do that. Huh? So it's highly customizable and it's easy. So for example, if I to go to class materials here and then I click upload, now I can upload files individually or I can also upload a folder. So if you have a, a folder with many files, you can upload the whole folder at one time or you can even upload files okay individually so now for example if i click uh files okay now i'm going to go to my file maybe i'm going to upload the uh powerpoint training for example sample slides so now when i upload the sample slides here you can see that the sample slides is now available here so this is powerpoint so you can upload pdf you can upload a word file a powerpoint excel anything that um, microsoft anything that is a file uh, you can upload it here and one of the best thing about this is it's accessible and available to all students so whoever is inside this class are all able to access the class material. So if you have your lecture materials, you can click class materials and then you can upload all of it here and all of it is available for your students. OK, so you can look at this file step. OK, post step is basically uh, your chat. OK, so if you click uh, new conversations here, this is where you can start chatting like a normal WhatsApp. So you have the uh, chat earlier that we use in terms of GIF, um, emoticons uh, and uh, emojis and all this that we use earlier. Now, this is the chat uh, that is um, when you do that class, you are able to see the conversation. Why you are not able to see what we did earlier? So you have the, the chat here. If you click the chat. So we did all this activity, right? You see all this activity. We have this emoji and all this we did here because this is created under a separate group, Microsoft 365 Teams and other apps. Today's workshop, huh? you see the top here. The top is created a different one. So if you use this in your class, uh, which is this one, blended learning with Microsoft, whatever conversation, uh, whatever activities that you have done in the class, as what we did this morning in terms of GIF, emoji and all this, everything will be available here. So it's like uh, uh, it keeps a record of all the chats uh, that is available here. So um, you, it can be accessible after class as well. So if anyone wants to recap and see, OK, what did we actually do? Or you want to recap what actually we did last week and then you want to start a new lesson this week, um, you can also click the general tab and then you can view all your past um, conversations here. OK. So um, everyone is OK, can can follow so far. OK, so Yi Fang, there's a there's a thumbs up there. OK, the rest can follow. Yeah, so far. OK, yeah, Fariza. OK, nice. Now let's talk about screen sharing. OK, so screen sharing. Now, if you see in your screen sharing uh, tab here, OK, you will have uh, uh, icons here. So you've got people, you've got chat, that reactions, OK? So if you want to react to some of the questions I'm asking, OK, for example, can you follow? Can you understand? So you maybe you can put a thumbs up here. Like some of our participants are putting a thumbs up now, like Yifang, Fariza is using a thumbs up here. Now you can even use a virtual applause. Uh, let's say that, uh, you know, uh, you have a, a class, for example, and the student has finished presentation. So usually when we uh, group as finished presentation, student and finished presentation, we will usually ask them to clap. OK, but in this case, asking all of them to unmute and clap is going to cause a, a chaos. So uh, you the students don't need to unmute so they can just go to reaction and then you can click applause. Uh, so you can click applause. So all of the clapping together. So let's say a presentation is over. Uh, you can click applause. So there are many other things. Huh? So let's say if a lecturer uh, make a joke and all this, so you can even click uh, laugh or your students and make a joke. You can even click laugh or surprise. So these are some of the uh, uh, reactions that is available for you. These are virtual, huh? virtual. Huh? OK, so you can even play around with this. OK, now you even have uh, this are the basic camera microphone and this is the screen sharing. This is the screen sharing. So now you see in my screen, uh, there is X. 
Okay, because why I am sharing a screen. Okay, so in your case, you will see an arrow. Okay, an arrow. Arrow icon enables you to start sharing your screen. So when you click that arrow icon, you are going to see something that looks like this. Yeah, so something that looks like this. So when you click an arrow icon, you will see there is a screen. Now you see like mine. Mine, I have two screen is because I have two monitors in front of me now. So if you only have one monitor, you are only able to see one screen. Okay, if you have two monitors, three monitors, then you have uh, two, three different um, screens here, right? And then you have window. So one of the things that uh, often that uh, our lecturers find it difficult is because they are sharing window, window. So sharing window means, uh, let's say if you open a PowerPoint and you share window, window is going to give you an option which application you want to share so if you have a word file open you have windows open and then you click it's only going to share that particular file let's say powerpoint is only going to share let's say if you open other files okay let's say you're talking and teaching your students and you are opening another file the student is not able to see that because why you are only sharing the powerpoint so this is the weaknesses for windows right um so if you share windows please bear in mind uh, that is only going to share that particular file. So what do you need to do if students say, I cannot see, if you open other files and start talking, they say, oh, I cannot see what you're talking. Uh, I only can see the PowerPoint. Then you go and stop share. Where the button you click share, stop share, and then share, and then click the window and share again, whatever file that you have just opened. My suggestion is to always uh, use screen. Um, screen is very easy because one, one time you click, whatever that you open wherever uh screen whatever screen that you have um everyone can see so you can open many many files at the same time and anyone can do and uh, see whatever that you are clicking and so this is the most easy and the most safer so it saves you a lot of hassle of uh stop sharing and sharing back again stop sharing sharing back again now you can see here in presenter mode I have different presenter mode here. So you got, uh, this is another new new future under uh, Microsoft uh, Teams. So you can see, for example, you've got one, two, three, four, different, different uh, features here. Okay, so now let's try uh, some of these features here. So you can see now, for example, uh, uh, when I want to share a screen, right? I'm sharing a screen now, right? So I can also uh, use different features so you can see how am i going to uh basically appear to you right so now i'm going to click this mode ah so now do you see any difference <laughs> how i appear to you so you will see that i am appearing as a uh, standout so that means i am appearing uh, within within the application itself so you can see now i can transition myself I can go left, I can go right, uh, so you can play around with this. So even if you have a, a word file, that makes it even more interesting. So if you put a word file, for example, okay, like this. Nah, now you see that I'm here. Now I can go here also. Uh, so I can also make myself very small. I can also make myself very big. Okay, so you can do this also, right? Uh, so this will capture uh, your students' attention as well. So you can put left, you can put right, but make sure that when you do this, uh, your PowerPoint is uh, suitable. Uh. Don't you put yourself in here and then all the wordings, uh, the student cannot read the wordings. Uh, okay, so for example, if I go this one and then I go to this one, uh, you see, so the students cannot cannot read. What is this? Uh? The fellow is covering the whole thing, cannot even read anything, you see, uh, like this. So I'm going to put myself here, then the students cannot read. And then here you're explaining, they cannot see what is actually the words. So you need to design, uh your slide accordingly okay and uh to suit you ah so maybe something like this lah. so the student can still see you ah because they love you so much so they can see you and also can see your slides so okay so now there are different different moods that you have here as well so you can even have this mode ah now this mode is something a bit different so this mode uh you appear side by side beside the powerpoint so this is more like a news reporting uh, so you can switch it this way. You can go to left, uh, you can go to right. So you can do a switch left to right, this kind of uh, mode as well. And this is very useful, especially for 
conference. If you are organizing conference, uh, this is a very useful mode where you can see both the presenter and the slide. Okay, and then another mode is something that looks like this, uh, where your face is much bigger. Uh, the, the, the person that is speaking is much bigger than the slide. So this also you can rotate uh, the position. You want left uh, position, you want right position, or you want to make it big, you want to make it small, uh, you can also play around this. See, this is what Teams is capable of. Really cool, right? Do you all like this feature? You like it? I play around all the time with this in my class. Uh, so it makes it look actually very professional. Then your students also see, wow, this teacher, this uh, lecturer, wow, not bad. Lah. Very high tech. But actually not us, lah. actually Teams. Teams is the one doing everything. Ah, So you just click, 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 and then you can play around with that. Okay. All right, so this is how um, we can share. Now, this is another very nice uh, feature. Yeah, In Microsoft Teams, you have a feature called Annotate. Annotate feature. Okay, let me just take a... Uh, uh, let me see whether I have a, a picture of this. Presenter mode. Let me see, is there Annotate? Okay, there's no Annotate in this. Okay, let me take... Uh, a screenshot of this. Okay, so I'm going to give you a, an idea about um, how does it look like. Okay, just give me uh, one minute. Uh, so I will share with you. I, I'm just copy pasting this inside here. So you get an idea of um, the controls that you have. Okay, now, for example, let me share the, the slide with you now. Okay. So this is the uh, slide that I was sharing earlier. Okay, this is a slide that I was sharing to you earlier. This one, right? So now what happens is if you take your mouse, uh, your mouse, your mouse, and you hover on top, you take your mouse and you go on top of the screen, you are able to see that the control appears here. Yeah, you have different controls. So the four types of presentation would appear here. So you can see that I already showed you the four types of presentation. Now you even have this small uh, pen icon here. So you can see like a small pen icon. Okay, this is what we call annotate. The small pen icon is called annotate, right? So now what is beside the pen icon? You will see uh, something that gives you the ability to play sound. Let's say if you are playing a video, and then there is no sound and your student said, oh, I, uh, uh, doctor, I cannot hear. There's no sound, uh, anything. So this is the, the button that gives you to on, uh, the video sound. So you're playing a video you can click this button, like do something like a screen, uh, computer monitor here. So you click this to, to play the sound of the video. Now I am going to click this pen, this pen icon. This is pen icon is called annotate. And what they okay, so now what are we going to do is we are going to annotate together. Okay, we are going to annotate together. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to give you a world map. All right, so now can we annotate this world map together? So can all of you use any of the uh, uh, pen icon. So you got red pen here. You got highlighter, right? Can you name me the countries in this map? What are some of the countries that you know in this map? Can you try? So you got red pen, and then you can even put text. Yeah. So can even put text. So I'm gonna put a text here. Name the countries. Yeah. So you can use. Uh, text or you can even use the pen. So here you can see that um, some of our lecturers are already trying. So there's AY here. So you can even see the, the name. Uh, AY is here. So you can see that uh, Fariza is typing. Ah, so Fariza. So now you can see uh, Dr. Ng is also typing something here. Uh, so you can put, for example, uh, what New Zealand. Yeah, so for example. Okay, and then uh, another of our lecturer here. I think this is Dr. Gan, I think. Okay, and he is typing Japan. Ah, Japan, right? So you can see that some of your students are trying to answer. So you can see in the class who is participating and who is not 
participating. Ah, so so this is something that is very nice. Ah, they got Sri Lanka also. So Renuka here has just given Sri Lanka. So somebody has just circled something here. Okay, and then uh, you have G F. Okay, Gun Gun is typing Indonesia, for example, United States. Okay, then you have Russia. Okay, any others? Any other countries that you can name? So I got quite a bit here. I got Japan. No, so it looks like these countries, maybe you all like to go. Lah. That's why uh, all these countries are here. Okay, then ah, Malaysia. Lucky Malaysia comes out here. Otherwise, very difficult. Lah. So lucky Dr. Fariza remember Malaysia. Okay, then you got uh, Dr. Fariza is also circling. Also circling. So you can see Dr. Ng has put Antarctic. So she has circled this Antarctic here. Okay. So what else do we have here? Ah, so there is Canada as well. So Dr. Kong has just put Canada. All right. Any others? That's all. So you got China. This this country here is what? Now you can use a laser pointer. You see the laser pointer very nice, huh? The thing like flying around. <laughs> so you can ask your student, how about this one? Anyone knows what country is this? Anyone knows? What countries are these here? So all these seems to be quite empty. And then here, anyone knows what country? Okay, and how about the countries that is neighboring uh, Malaysia? So what are the countries that is neighboring Malaysia? So these countries are missing here. Okay, what are the countries that is neighboring that is quite important uh, and neighboring Malaysia? So we have Indonesia. And then we have uh, Australia. Okay, how about the rest? Uh, so you can see now that uh, this functionality, yeah, this functionality makes it very nice to um, collaborate with your students. So this is just an example I'm giving you. Now you can even put a diagram, okay, and ask them to uh, give their answer, for example. So you can even play around like this. Uh, you have uh, 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 what's this laser pointer? You got pen, you got highlighter, uh, you got even eraser. Now you could even got sticky note. Uh, so if you want to put a sticky note, now you can even put a sticky note. Okay, now for example, so I'm gonna put a sticky note here. Uh good. Okay. Seems like it seems like a big country here. Okay, so now. No need to be so big, lah. Otherwise, cover everything. Ah, now you can even put it here. See, so nice. So this is what teams can do, yeah. So you can see, for example, I can even put here. Good. Seems like a big country here. So now you can even put sticky pad. And the one thing good about this is, uh, the sticky pad has your student's name. You see the name here. So you can do an activity that even has your student name. And on top of that. Okay, there's a lot of things they can do. You click more here. Okay, you can change the color. Okay, I can change it to green color. Okay, I can change it to blue color. So a lot of things that uh, can be done here. And on top of that, uh, if you go over the, the sticky note, right, uh, you can even have a reaction. Got like, okay, got laugh, and then got thinking. Ah, so I can put thinking icon here. So you can see, for example, right? So there's a lot of things you can do. Okay, so now let's do an activity in terms of the uh, sticky note. So can you all select the sticky note and maybe put a very short note uh, beside each of the country? Okay, uh, why? Uh, what you like about that country? What you know about the country? Just a very short sentence. What a short sentence about why or what you know about the country? Okay, so you can see, for example, uh Izura is steady. Tana Tumpa Daraku. Wow, very nice. So you see, Izura is giving a response there. Tana Tumpa Daraku. Okay, so now you can even give a, a like to this. So you can see like. Okay, so can we do that? I see, okay, uh, Izura is giving. So you can even help your students to organize. Huh? Sometimes uh, the sticky note might be covering, so you can. Uh, take this. Okay, maybe I'm I'm gonna put it a little bit here. Okay, make it a bit small here. Ah, uh, so I'm gonna put here. So this one, never been here. One never been here. Wanted. Okay, wanted to meet polar bear. <laughs> okay, 
never been here wanted to meet polar bear so rosie is telling yeah <laughs> okay anta <laughs> antarctic so you can put here under uh, antarctic here hey right? what happened somebody when an uh, what happened to this uh? there's an error that appeared wait uh, let me share again sometimes it, it can happen unless uh, somebody somebody has click something that that uh, takes out the whole thing yeah okay just a moment let me let me start the annotation again ah there you go so everything is here yeah? so uh, if that happens sometimes uh, somebody can uh, accidentally press something so don't 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 panic or anything <laughs> uh, just stop sharing and then just share again okay and everything will be back okay uh, so sometimes it, it happens lah. so here you can see Hazriel says okay wow world cup winner argentina okay very good okay so you can see that for example uh how interactive this can be yeah so if you use the annotation part of the uh tool so you can see that it becomes very uh interactive and students basically they like this okay because um uh, it, it gives them a sense of participation uh, so they can click and they can participate in this so world cup winner for example yeah so you can maybe make it a bit smaller argentina okay so now you see hasril hasril is the one that say world cup winner okay and hasril seems to like argentina so now maybe you can initiate a discussion with hasril so hasril do you uh have you been to argentina uh do you like argentina you know so hasril can unmute and start to share so you see how we can really use these tools to make our classroom a very uh, dynamic one, a very interactive one. Okay. All right. Everyone okay yeah? on this can, can follow. Yeah? yeah. So this is the uh, annotation tool in uh, Microsoft. Okay. So I think everyone is still, <laughs> everyone is still uh, annotating on this. Yeah. Okay so okay so they are still going on so you see sometimes very difficult to stop lah, huh? because it's so engaging huh? it's so nice so you can create an activity like this huh? i'm just giving you an example of a world map okay uh, you can even create something else so you can even come up with a powerpoint you can come up with a picture for example uh, and and do many things so it depends on your course module depends on your course module okay right so okay so now let's let's uh don't forget to take a screenshot yeah uh, one of the limitations of this is that once you annotate you're not able to see you're not able to save uh the discussion so if you want to save the discussion you just take a screenshot uh from the from your keyboard or uh, uh use the snipping tool in the desktop right uh, that is the limitation so teams does not have an option to actually save uh the discussion that you have just done Okay, so just uh, take note of that. Huh? So otherwise, sometimes when you teach and say, oh, Lama, I, I cannot save the, the discussion, everything gone. Uh, so please take note of that. Huh? So uh, that is one of the limitations at the moment uh, that teams are trying to develop something to, to solve that. Okay, so the next one we are going to uh, look at is how to basically create a meeting within teams. Okay, so we learned about uh, annotation earlier and we learned about screen sharing earlier so what are the types of screen sharing and then uh, we learned about how to screen share and how to annotate uh, within the screen sharing okay now we are going to learn something new we are going to learn um, how to create a meeting okay within teams so there are two ways you can create a meeting within teams so number one you have created this uh, group called blended learning with microsoft 365 okay one of the things that um, our lecturers often do is um, they are usually um, creating links through the calendar now one of the advantages of creating a group uh, in microsoft teams is you don't have to always create a new link um, in calendar you can immediately start meeting your class or start the lesson by just clicking meet meet you see meet there's meet here so if you click meet right you are going to come to a, 
a meeting that looks something like this. How you join the meeting this morning, you get a window that looks something like this. So you're going to click meet and you're able to straight away join. So you don't have to go um, to the calendar. You don't have to schedule a date, a time. And each time you have classes, you have to create a new link again and again and again. Uh, so you don't have to do that. It saves a lot of hassle and saves a lot of time. So the moment your class time comes near, uh, you can straight away go to Teams, open the, click the general tab here, and then click meet. Okay. And then all your students are able to join in. All your uh, students are able to join in the same class. Okay. They will have a big notification and they can join in there. So this is a very good shortcut way. Okay. To click, uh, to create a meeting. Now, let's say that if you're not comfortable in sudden meetings, uh, some of us are not comfortable in sudden meetings. Sometimes we like to, to see link, lah. we like to see link. We feel very happy and comfortable with uh, seeing link. Okay, no problem, right? So you can even create a meeting within the group. Okay, so now I'm going to go and click the drop down here, drop down menu here, just beside me, and I can put schedule a meeting. Okay, so now when you put schedule a meeting, uh, now you can add a title. Okay, maybe a uh, class presentation week. Okay. Required attendees, no need lah, because it's all the groups. So you see here, for example, you have the group. All the people are inside here. No need the uh, attendees lah. Okay, required attendees. Then you can put the date, the date, the time, what time to what time, and all this. Okay, and then you put some details. Then you click send, right? So when you click send, then you will see that, okay, there's a meeting notification here, right? So everyone knows there's a meeting that has been scheduled. This is the date, this is the time, and this is the uh, title of the meeting, right? So you can even do it this way. So there are two ways you can create a meeting within your group. So one, you can straight away click meet now and start the meeting immediately. Uh, second thing, and this one, when you click meet now, you don't need to create a link. You don't have to go through the calendar and all this. You can straight away start immediately. Or another way is to schedule a meeting. Okay, so you can click here. And then you schedule the meeting and it'll come up a notification like this. Okay. Now just bear in mind that if you were to create a meeting, okay, within the group, within teams, within the group, like this, yeah. So my group is called uh blended learning. Blended learning with Microsoft 365. That means uh, if I create a meeting, only members in this group can join the meeting. So if I create a meeting and then I want to invite somebody else outside to join the meeting also cannot. They cannot join because only members of this group can join this meeting. So let's say if I want to create a meeting that involves anyone, anyone within uh, my group and outside of my group, then you cannot create a meeting here. Okay, because this meeting is created uh, for members of this group only. So only members of this group can join the meeting. Now, if they are not a member, uh, they cannot join. So even if you give them the link, they will have a lot of difficulties to join. So if you want to create a meeting, a general meeting that anyone, students, anyone within UM, outside of UM, anyone wants to join, similar to our Google Meet, then you go to Calendar. Calendar. Ah, then you click new meeting okay then you can put your meeting title in. so maybe meeting meeting with uh, uh easy uh, meeting with easy very important uh. so now you can put all the important person okay okay maybe renuka renuka is coming to the meeting as well okay and then who who else is coming uh? so you can put in all this now if they have a microsoft 365 account okay you can put in here if they don't have a Microsoft 365 account, you can even put in their personal email. So I can put donny.adams at uh, gmail.com. So this notification is going to go directly to my email. Okay, so you can put personal email. If they have 365 account, you can put a 365 account here. Okay, you can set the date, you can set a time. Okay, and then if it's a weekly thing, every week you're going to meet with the same time, then you can put weekly. Ah, so you can have weekly 
you want to meet daily also can lah. Huh? You want to meet daily every day. Just want to see, yeah, I meet every day and say hi to each other. Then in the meeting also can. So you can put daily, they got weekly, then you got monthly, okay? But just remember that it will follow lah. Huh? If you say weekly, then one week later, okay? So that means next week, Wednesday, you can meet again at the same time and all this. And then you put the details of the meeting, maybe at the agenda and all this here, right? And then you click send. So when you click send, uh, it will go directly into your inbox. So how is your uh, uh, meeting participants are going to see? They are going to see something that looks like this. Uh, so this is how it will appear in their email. So you're going to see, for example, this is the subject. This is the subject. Okay. And then this is the person who actually created the meeting. And then you see the date, the time. Okay, and it's same, exactly like a Google invite now. Huh? So whether yes or no. And then for you to click the, for you to join the meeting, okay, you will need to uh, click here. Okay, so you can see, click and join a meeting. Click and join a meeting. Uh, let me, let me use this. Okay, so you see this part. Click and join a meeting. So this is where you click. So there's no link or anything. Huh? So you just click join a meeting. And then you can join the meeting there. Okay, this itself is a link by itself. So now you also have uh, Teams has also given you a meeting ID and the password. Now, if you want to use a meeting ID and password, you can also do that. Okay. So you can even enter in the meeting and see join with an ID. Last time don't have, yeah? Last time don't have. Now they have this join with an ID. Okay, join with an ID. So now you click join with an ID. Now you put the meeting ID and then you put the password. Uh, so you can even do this. Okay. So this is where earlier you saw the meeting ID and the password. So you can click that. Right. So this is how we can create a meeting within Teams and you can create a meeting uh, uh, outside of your own group, outside of your own team. And usually uh, this kind of meeting involves people outside of your group. Okay, so this is how you schedule meeting uh, within the group and outside them. Okay, anyone can, everyone can follow, yeah? Can follow so far? Okay, good. So we have learned so far how to schedule meeting uh, within the calendar, inside the meeting, uh, within Teams, and outside of Teams as well. Okay, so now I think now it's about 10, 17. Maybe we take a short 10 minutes break yeah and then we will come back and and um, learn other parts of team so we take a short 10 minutes break we'll come back at 10. so we have learned about um, creating meetings in uh, microsoft teams and how to create meetings within a team group and outside of the group okay so now the next thing is we're going to see how do we uh, basically customize our virtual backgrounds okay and to customize the virtual backgrounds is, is quite um, easy in in Microsoft teams so we have to click there's more more options here and then you have background effects so you click more you click background effects so when you click background effects you are able to see there are many options in which you can uh, customize your background. So you have this uh, uh, bubble icon, okay, and then you have uh, this one, you have this one. So uh, you don't even have to apply first. One of the good things about this is you can first preview and see how does it look like. So for example, if I click this one, okay, then it looks like this. Um, if I click this one and then I, I want to preview it, Okay, and it looks like this. If I click this one, I want to preview it. It, it looks like this, right? So there are many, many uh, different backgrounds. Uh, they have added it and and make it even more uh, better. And there are even more options as we go along the way, right? So you can see that these are some of the options that you have. Uh, maybe you want to try it. Uh, maybe you want to see what are the sort of uh, virtual backgrounds. So click uh, one of these. And then you can put apply and turn on video. Apply and turn on video. And then you are able to see uh, what a sort of uh, virtual background is available. Okay, so you can um, click 
any of this option and then you put click and apply and turn on video can you all try that and see let's see what what sort of uh, um options that you all like here and you have here so we have uh, even minecraft uh, this is quite famous for students who like minecraft uh, these are some of the minecraft uh, backgrounds that we have here and then you have something that is more of a scenery and all this so you can choose actually uh, what is the sort of background that you need so we can try to experiment on this you can try um, so isura maybe you can try to select some of the backgrounds that you have here just click any of the uh, background and click apply Yeah, I already applied actually. You already applied that. Is that a, is yeah. that a background? Yeah, that's my background. Uh, it's an office background. It. Oh, okay. Not uh, nice. My own. Yeah. Okay, nice. So you have customized it. Very nice. Okay. So you can also um uh, customize the background. Okay. Um, you can see that uh, I've also uploaded. So if you want to, if you already have a virtual background, for example, uh, this is UM's virtual background right so if you want to upload this virtual background into teams you can also do that so click add new okay and then you can select the files from your desktop okay so what is the file so you click add new and then you can select so uh, for example i've already uploaded the file here ums one so if i click apply then it's going to appear something like this now this is a conference that we did last year as well so you can see that uh, it's actually very nice uh, if you are able to design a, a background that looks something like this and then you know you have this arc shape at the side left and right and then if you were to do a group photo and it comes out very nice everyone is having that um, arc shape because the arc shape is falling left and right so you can even do this uh, virtual sort of uh, thing um, here okay so you can this is how we uh, customize the virtual background and now you can even um, use the uh, together mode now okay so we even have a together mode now so if you click more and then you have together mode so if you click together mode so what is going to happen is together mode enables uh, us to have a classroom that looks like a virtual classroom so this is uh, together mode now so let me stop sharing the screen and share again okay so this is together mode now um, so you can see that uh, it looks like a virtual classroom now this is a feature that i like to use because um, it gives a sense of uh, a virtual classroom uh, to your students, right? Um, so can all of you, uh, you want to get a feel of this, you can turn on your cameras and you can see that you are actually appearing in this. So as um, everyone turns on, um, you will see that the screen gets smaller because it's trying to uh, accommodate all our students. So let's say if you have a student, um, say about, uh, 20 students 30 students in the class right um, if you want to ask a student to turn on their camera turn on the camera you know sometimes it can be a bit <laughs> a bit uh you know um students might not like it lah. They, they may not like your approach um so one of the things i do is uh, i straight away when i start my class i straight away turn on this virtual virtual um, seating arrangement so that all my students appear in this and I, when i teach them it appears continuously like this so i told them uh, you know let's let's have a virtual classroom and i want to continue uh, in this format so everyone turns on uh, their camera and we can maintain this so for example if you uh, turn off the camera then you disappear from the screen uh, when you turn on the camera then you can continuously see your student throughout the class so here one thing you can see that in this uh, together mode now uh, you can only see your students um, uh, appearance that means the, the the face feature you can't see the background uh, so that makes them a bit easy la. sometimes uh, 
their background maybe is not suitable and they don't like to appear. Uh, so this is the together mode now. So um, let's try to play around with this together mode. Uh, can you all uh, turn on your camera and then I will show you uh, some of the uh, features of uh, together mode. So now if you see at my bottom left, you have change scene, change scene. So if I click change scene, uh, now you can change different different scenes actually. So this is just one of the scene. I can even change it to uh, something that looks like this. So you will see that the whole um, classroom has now changed. Um, so you have different scenery. So this one looks something like a, a bit of a traditional uh, theater style. Uh, so here you can even turn it something that looks like a like a <laughs> we are sitting in a in a stone stone kind of a environment um, here uh, that if you notice that when you click change scene each of it has a number uh, on your top right so you see like 50 okay 50 means uh, the picture can the scene can accommodate 50 students okay but some scenes can accommodate five like this scene that I'm showing you now can only accommodate five people. So it looks like we are all are sitting in a cafe. OK, and then uh, uh, this scene here, you can accommodate up to uh, 50, uh, 47 people as well. So the meeting organizer is the one that sits in front. So you can see, for example, Umu is sitting right in front uh, as a sole person is because she is the meeting organizer. So if you are the one who organized the meeting, then you will be sitting at the front. OK, and you have many many different scenes here actually so you want to look something like in a starship uh, this is something in a in a starship so this can also accommodate up to uh, 24 people uh, you want something that looks in an ocean so something that looks in an ocean is something like this so this one can accommodate up to uh, 10 people so this is something that uh, makes our classroom uh, really really unique and you can see that there are many new uh, features that has been introduced um, into Teams uh, where you can try uh, different different features here. OK, so this is something that you can play around. So to make your classroom uh, not look boring, uh, you can try something like this. OK, so let me try to activate this uh, together mode now and then maybe we can take a group picture uh, together. So since we are already in a, a picture mode, then we can take a group picture together. OK. So let's take a group picture for uh, our our workshop for this today. Yeah. So there are a few. So we got uh, one, two, three, four, uh, four plus or more. Eh? One, two, three, four, five. Um, wow, we got so many other participants actually. So we got 24 with us online. So everyone, you want to take a group photo, you can join us now. Maybe we can take a group photo together for our workshop. Oh, there's, uh, there's a Teams account with a program name, uh, Program Sajana Kesehatan Awam. Okay, so there's a Teams account created under a, a program here. Okay, let's, uh, everyone ready? Shall we take a, a nice photo? Oops, uh, can't really see you though. <laughs> it's, it's right at the, at the bottom. Maybe you want to change your, your camera. Um, Maybe tilt it. Ah, yes, tilt it a little bit so that we can see you. Kadang-kadang uh, our camera position. Uh, so sometimes we don't notice our camera position. Uh, we on the camera, but our students can't see. They see our our forehead. Uh, so sometimes the camera position is uh, quite important. Uh, uh, okay, so are we ready to take a picture? Maybe uh, Umu, you can help us to take a nice uh, picture together. Okay, hold on, yeah. One, two, three. All right. Okay, maybe uh, one more with a thumbs up. Uh, we have a thumbs up uh, for this. Okay, so thumbs up sometimes can hide. Huh? <laughs> so we have to put a bit in front. Okay. Okay, hold on, yeah. All right, one, two, three. Uh, okay, uh, again, one, two, three. Okay. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so thank you, everyone. So we took a nice um, group together, yeah, a nice photo. So I will encourage you to um, use this uh, together now because the reason being that uh, 
uh, it helps uh, to bring the classroom atmosphere. Um, so instead of asking the students to turn on your camera, turn on your camera, uh, you know, I want to see you and all this. So usually what do I do is I create a, a together mode. When I start my class, I straight away on a together mode and um, I can see all of them there. Then I told them, okay, um, I would like to see you continuously towards this class, you know. So um, when you see them disappear, then you know they have turned on the camera. Then you can prompt them. Say, okay, uh, maybe what has happened, uh, uh, Felinda, uh, we can't see you, you know, uh, are you there? Uh, then Felinda will be appear. So continue to uh, be there so that we can see you. So that creates a more of a virtual classroom kind of environment, okay? So this is what we call Together Now mode, and it's very unique to uh, Microsoft Teams only. No other um, applications has this uh, feature, okay? Now the next one is uh, recording feature. Okay, I'm going to share the screen. Okay, now we have a, a recording feature in, in Teams. Okay, and one thing good about this recording, you go to more, and then you have the recording feature. Okay, so you can see um, now we are recording the meeting, so you stop recording. Uh, if you are um, having a meeting, then you want to start recording, then you click more, you click start recording. So it will start recording the uh, meeting that you are in. And one of the best uh, new feature for Microsoft Teams is uh, you can even transcribe. So if you click transcribe, okay, you click more, you click transcribe, um, you can see that uh, the teams are trying to transcribe whatever that I am seeing. So for example, now um, here you can see that the uh, transcription, okay, transcription is now going on here. So whatever that I'm saying, Okay, it's all appearing here as a transcription. Now you can even download this transcription. So if you click this uh, 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 top here, once the meeting is ended, you click the top here, you can download the video and you can even download the transcription. So if you're doing a qualitative study, uh, for example, you're doing an interview qualitative online, uh, you can interview the person online and then on top of that, you can download the transcription. So that saves you a lot of time in terms of uh, transcribing the word one by one uh, because everything is in audio. Uh, now you have audio to text and the accuracy is about um, 95%, 95% accuracy. So it's best to see maybe some of the words or some of the sentences that doesn't really make sense. Maybe you can listen back to the audio and uh, fix that, but it's 95% accurate. Okay, so you, this is an, a new feature that uh, was added as part of the meeting. Huh? So you have transcribed here. Uh, another thing that uh, that is quite uh, useful is uh, you can even turn on uh, live captions. Um, so this is something that is very similar to uh, Google Meet where the live captions uh, appears at the, at the bottom. So as you speak, uh, people can uh, basically interpret uh, what are you speaking in their own words, right? So are you able to see the live uh, captions appearing in your screen? Can you see the live captions? It appears at the bottom. So whatever that I'm speaking will appear in words, the live captions. Can you all see that? Anyone, anyone notice the live captions? It's more like a subtitle actually. So do you see that appearing? Nobody can see, yeah? Okay. Um, Ubu, are you able to see the live captions? No. Yes, I, I can ah, see. You can see, yeah? Yes, uh, right? No, no, no. Live captions. Oh, live caption. Um, currently, no. Currently, no. Huh? Okay, let me try again. Um, you should be able to see the live captions. Okay, let me try again. Now, I'm going to off the screen sharing and I'm going to turn on live captions. Okay, are you all able to see the live captions now? No. Any, I, I any live captions? supposed to appear on your box. Yeah. No. Okay. It doesn't appear, yeah? All right. Uh, Ubo, can you try? 
Can you try live captions? Can you turn on live captions on your side and uh, maybe speak something? Uh, can you try again? Uh, I mean, I already turned on the live caption. Okay. So, can you all see any live caption? I I I don't see it here. Maybe because I'm not the meeting organizer. Uh, Ubo, Do I need to try? turn on my video? Then the live caption will be on. Or no, 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 no. As 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 you speak, it will it will appear. But now, my um, as you are the meeting organizer, uh, yeah. If you are, because all of us are the participant uh, for this meeting. Um, so if you are the meeting organizer, uh, when you turn on the live caption feature, then all of us will be able to see that. Um, uh, otherwise, you're not able to see that. But another way uh, for me to, to show you all, now this is another very nice feature, you know. Um, I do this mostly for uh, my students. Okay, let me share the screen. Okay, so this is uh, uh, my PowerPoint. Now, I do this all the time, uh, especially for uh, my students. Okay, let me uh, here. Let me show you all there. Is it right? Or no, not this one. Because mine is all automatic. Uh, so I've already put in um, automatic there. Uh, so where is the tab? Imagine the rearrange. Okay, let me let me let me go back again and and see that now. Uh, in 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 PowerPoint, you even have a subtitle. You even have a subtitle here, and that helps you to uh translate. So PowerPoint will be able to translate whatever that you are speaking uh into a different language. Mana dia punya this one ah they have ah there okay um so now you see uh Ferlin Ferlin has already activated the live caption so now you can see that uh there is some wordings there so uh Ferlin I think the hanger is it can you activate back again that one I think you all can see some subtitle at the bottom. Uh, that will be yes, we can. Ah, uh, yes. So that 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 will be um the subtitle version, uh, the the live caption version. So uh, Husayri is also saying yeah. So you can see that one of the limitations is you must be a uh, organizer, organizer. So um, when you are an organizer of the meeting then you can access this otherwise uh it's not able they are, you're not able to access this okay so this will be one of the uh feature for this uh let me try to see what i can do with powerpoint yeah because last time i used to do it's all automatic for me when i when i own um i'm trying to show another feature for you ah okay 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 there is here okay so let me let me share the the screen now. Okay. So now as I share my PowerPoint, now I'm going to go to uh below slide subtitle. Okay. So are you all able to see any um uh, subtitle? Anything that is appearing? in the powerpoint any subtitle that is appearing at the at the bottom of the powerpoint you all see anything none yeah okay never mind let me let me try this uh, uh feature again uh later on okay i will i will show you how to actually do it now uh what happens is in this feature is able to translate whatever uh, language that you speak in a different language. So um, in my class, there are a lot of students from China. So what I do is um, I have that option to translate whatever I speak into Chinese uh, Mandarin language. So they are able to follow and understand what I'm speaking better. Okay, so that will be an option for you. So I will. I'll see through again and see 
um, how I can activate that option later on, yeah, for you. All right. So I think uh, that's about it about Microsoft Teams. Uh, so do you have any questions on Microsoft Teams? Uh, feel free to ask me now. We have covered on Microsoft Teams. So do you all have any questions on the features? Anything you want to ask about Microsoft Teams? You have tried something before and maybe something didn't work or anything. Do you all have any questions? We are done with Microsoft Teams. Now we are going to go to Microsoft OneNote and then we are going to go to Microsoft Suite. Anything else on Teams? None, yeah? Okay, so if there's nothing more on uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, let us uh, transition now. So I'm going to go to uh, Microsoft OneNote now. Okay, so let me just share share the screen on Microsoft OneNote. Okay, so uh, now we are going to talk about Microsoft OneNote. So Microsoft OneNote is basically a digital notebook. Uh, it's a digital notebook. Okay, and what is Microsoft OneNote? So Microsoft OneNote, it's um, a very useful application uh, that we can use for teaching and learning, especially uh, it's like a personal diary for the students and it's a personal diary for you um, as an educator. So in Microsoft OneNote, you have uh, four options. You have four sections. You have a section called collaboration space. Okay, now just take note that in collaboration space, you can edit and the students can edit. So whatever contents that you put in collaboration space, uh, both sides can edit the contents. Huh? So they can delete, they can add, they can edit the contents. Now you have content library. So content library, only you can edit. Um, students can only view, right? So if you have any materials, any PowerPoints or anything that you want to put, uh, this will be the component, the part which is called content library, where you can edit. Uh, students can only view the content. Now, this one, you can edit teacher only section. You can edit. You can write anything you want. You can even write student marks inside here and the students cannot view. So this part, uh, whatever that you write, uh, students cannot view inside. Uh, they cannot see. They cannot edit. They cannot uh, view uh, this part. This is the uh, teacher only section. Okay, so this is like your own private space. Okay, and in OneNote, every student gets a notebook. Every student gets a copy of notebook. So they have their own uh, personal diary. So let's say you have 10 students added in the class, then all 10 students have their own notebook and each of the notebook will have their own names on top of the notebook. So these are uh, things that we need to take note of uh, when we are using Microsoft OneNote and these are the sections. OK, so let's go and dive into uh, Microsoft OneNote and see what is it all about. So how to use Microsoft OneNote now in your Microsoft Teams. OK, you have to go to this area called Teams. OK, go to Teams, right? And then here you will see that welcome uh, to blended learning. This is the group that we have created earlier this morning, right? OK, so now um, in this group, Blended Learning Microsoft, I am going to click Set Up Class Notebook. Set Up Class Notebook. So you click this one. OK, and then it will ask you set up a class notebook. Now I'm going to click Blank Notebook. OK, and here you can see these are the four options uh, that I highlighted to you earlier. So I'm going to click next. All right now, this is the sections of a notebook. Yeah. So to understand class uh, one note, uh, here is an uh, example. So you see, for example, I have a picture of a uh, notebook here. So this is how uh, one note functions. 
So each of the of the one node has a section. So you have the green section, uh, pink section, blue section, and gray section, right? So it's a uh, it's like a hard copy notebook with sections. So in this case, the orange and pink sections, for example, can represent handout class notes, and all this you can rename the section okay so for example if you don't like handouts i can rename it to maybe class materials okay and then here maybe i can rename it to assignments okay so here maybe i can rename it to uh okay maybe i don't want homework i want quizzes so you only want three sections that's fine as well so every student's notebook will have this three section class materials assignments quizzes so i'm going to click Create. Okay, so once you create, this is your notebook. Once you create, so uh, Microsoft is setting up the notebook. Okay, so now you can see that your notebook is all set up. So you have a nice message Welcome to uh, Class Notebook, for example. So you see that. Uh, these are the information on each of the notebook and what are the spaces that is involved, right? So how to use notebook? The first thing that we do is you need to open the navigation pane. So this is the navigation pane. So click the navigation pane here, right? And then this is like some bookshelf. Yeah? So you click the navigation pane and you can see that these are the section. So these are the section that uh, we have Created collaboration space, content library, teacher only. So you can see collaboration space. Okay, you have something here. Then you have content library, you have something here, and then teacher only. So you have all these sections uh, in your class notebook. So what are we going to do now is um, we are going to uh, create a new section. So now, for example, under uh, content library, I am going to create a new section under content li library. So you can click add section. So section name may be uh, class materials. Week one. OK, so now you can see class materials week one. So I can move it under uh, content library, for example. Sorry, you click this one. Add section. No, it's not supposed. OK, sorry, this one. The uh, class section is this tab is fixed here. These tabs are all fixed. So you cannot do anything much about this tab, right? But what you can do is you can create new sections here. Class materials week one, and then you can create another section here. Another, so it's going to appear complementary to what you have here. But in the content library here, right, you have these pages, add pages. So this is where you can add page. So now you have untitled page. So maybe you can put week one discussion. OK, so now you can go back here and add page. So maybe week two discussion. OK, so this is how we can create. So you see, for example, week one discussion, week two discussion. So you can create as many pages as you want. It's like a notebook, yeah, uh, typical notebook. You can create any sections you want. You can create as many pages as you one so now in the um uh, at, uh part here in the sections you have created now you can even change the color so if you right click on this uh, you can rename the section you can even change the color so maybe if you don't like that color i want to change it to say red color now you can see that you can change it to red color if i want to change the different color i want to change it to yellow color uh, it's not really yellow, la, it's gold color, but you can see that you can change. So these are the options for you to uh, basically customize uh, the class OneNote. Uh, so you can change the section color, for example. Now in the page, uh, in the within the section, you have the page. Now in the page, you can also customize uh, in terms of the topic. Week one discussion, week two discussion. So you can even customize uh, based on that. Okay, now. Uh, what you can do now in week one, I am going to type something. So now this is a full notebook. So you can see, right? For example, what I've done is I have now uh, written a text. So this text here, 
um, you can actually move it around actually you want to move it here you want to move it here you want to put it at the bottom so you can actually move it around okay any any part of the, this one is a typical word word uh, document where you can bold it you can italic okay um, whatever that you want okay so this is a capability where you can enter text now another things that you can do is you can also insert a picture so now for example if i put insert and i put picture and then i can select a picture from any of my files so let's say that okay i want this picture so you can see that this picture is now here so i have a nice text here which is called this is a cool notebook okay and then i have a picture here so you can make it uh big this picture you want to make it and then you want to move it anywhere around you can also move it so this is the tab uh for you to move it okay and then now what i want to do is i can even put a link Okay, let's say that I want to put a link. Click, click this link. I had one item. So, click this link to learn more. Okay, so now for example, click this link to learn more. So now you can even uh, insert a link here. Okay, so. Uh, what you can do is uh, you can highlight this and then you put insert okay and then you go to insert link so insert link here uh, you can put for example maybe you want to make it a bit bold and then you can put a url okay so maybe i go to a website maybe i put one note so this is for my students to read on microsoft one note what is microsoft one note all about so i go to a google i i copy the url then I go back to Microsoft Teams and I paste the URL here and I click insert. So now you will see that this is now a link, right? So click this link to learn more. So if they want to learn about Microsoft OneNote, what is it all about? They can now click a link. Now on top of that, you can also insert an audio. So you can see that this is an audio button here. So if I click audio, uh, Microsoft you see, it's asking you permission whether to access your camera, your microphone, speakers. So I'm going to put allow. Now, what it's doing is it's recording me as I'm talking. So it's recording my, my voice. So once you have done, you can click stop, right? And then what happens is it's going to appear as an audio file. So this is very useful for your students. Now you have a page that has a text. You have a page that has a uh, uh, picture you have a, a page that has a link and on top of that you have a page that has uh, audio so let's say if they want to read and then they want to listen to your audio they can just click this and click click and then they can listen to your uh, explanation now on top of that you can also insert many other things you can click insert okay and then now for example if you want to insert uh, any particular symbols that you have you can also insert the symbols now you can click this here the three dots and you can even insert emojis uh, if you have any emojis you can even insert emojis here okay you want to insert any stickers you can also insert stickers here so there are a variety of uh, different different stickers so it's up to you how how you actually um, customize your notebook and and make it very interesting but these are some of the contents uh, that you can put in you can put emoji in here um, you can even put uh, uh, the stickers inside here now for another thing that you can do you go to view okay you can even change the page color so if you see the page color here okay now you can even change it to maybe uh, something that is a little bit uh, greenish so you can change it this or you want something that is a little bit uh, pinkish so you can even change the pink color, uh, the page color. So it does not appear all white color only, all right? So now you can even, uh, let's say for example, I already have week one discussion. This is the date, the time, and this is the contents that I have. Now on top of that, uh, you can also start to uh, uh, print. You want to print this uh, notebook, you go to file, okay, and then you click print. So print this page. Now you can even print this page out. So it gives you an option on printing this page out and it even gives you an option of saving it into a PDF file. 
So you want to save it into a PDF file, you also have an option to do that. Okay. Now, if you are somebody who like to draw, you can also draw. So click the draw option and then you have many of the options. So you've got a pencil icon here. Uh, you've got a pen icon here and then you've got different, different colors. So you can start drawing here. You even have red color. You can start drawing here. You have blue color. You can start using this to draw and then you even have green color. So all this, so if you're, for example, a maths teacher or you're a science teacher and you use a lot of uh, formula, so you can even click this and, and use, write your equation in ink. So these are uh, uh, those who are maths teachers. You can use this to select. Uh, these are some of the options that you have. If you have any of the formulas, for example, you want to write any of the formulas, you can do that or simply just use the Microsoft Draw. Uh, and then you can draw here, okay? And then you can also erase um, anything that you want. So erasing is quite fast, okay? So these are some of the options that you have uh, in terms of drawing and uh, in terms of uh, coloring and in terms of uh, mathematics, science, any of the formula, you even have the drawing options here, okay? Uh, so I'm actually more or less done about Microsoft OneNote. Uh, do you all have any questions about Microsoft OneNote? Anything you're not sure? Any questions about Microsoft OneNote? So once you add your students into the group, uh, you will be able to see all their names here. Each of the students will have a name. Okay, this is on, uh, they have their own notebook. Okay, so this is on Microsoft one note and they can access their own notebook as well. Okay, so any questions on one note? I'm done with Microsoft One Note. Okay, no questions, yeah. Okay, no questions, then we will take a short break. Um and then we will come back at uh, eleven twenty, yeah. We take a short 10 minutes break and then we'll come back at 11.20 and then I'm going to show you about uh, Microsoft Suite, okay, which is the last application for today, right? So we take a short break. Okay, we will we will continue with our workshop uh, this morning. Um, this is another uh, very nice feature of Microsoft 365 um, that I'd like to share with all of you. Um, if you see this document here, uh, this is a typical uh, Microsoft Word document uh, that, oops, I think I'm sharing the wrong screen. Hold on, uh, let me just stop share and share again. Okay, so this is a typical, a normal uh, Microsoft Word document uh, that we see here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is um, I would like to invite all of you uh, to come and write something on this document. Okay, so what you can do is, um, for example, describe what you can see. So you see a picture here. Now you can help to facilitate this because if you go to leave it as an open document, uh, it can get very messy and uh, sometimes um, our students can uh, type over somebody's answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table. So I'm going to go insert, table, go to insert, then you click table, and then I'm going to put a table here that it has two columns. Okay, so let's say this column. So I'm going to put name, okay, answer. So uh, this helps to facilitate our students as they answer this document. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to invite all of you to come and edit this document with me. So give me your name and give me your answer what you can see from this picture so how are we going to do that uh, you can do this easily you go to see your top right here top right here you have the doc uh, uh, option called share so click share the blue color one up uh, share and then here they say please upload your document to share it so i'm going to upload it into onedrive so you just click it once, that's it. So you don't need to open OneDrive, enter in your username, password, or you don't have to do that. Just click that 
and uh, what is going to happen is uh, they this document is going to be uploaded automatically into OneDrive. Now you can see there are some options here. So you see copy link. I am going to change this to uh, people in University of Malaya with a link or people with existing access or specific people. So I'm going to put this people in University of Malaya with the link. And then here, in terms of settings, I am going to change this to can edit. Can edit. All right. And then I'm going to click apply. So now I have a link here, right? So I'm going to copy this link and I am going to give to you in a chat. So can you all join me in this document? So you click that, that link in the chat and you can join me in this document. So join me in this document here. You can click and put your name and then put your answer. So describe what you can see. So now you can see on your top right, you can see that all your students are joining in. Yeah. So you can see, for example, our lecturers here are joining in. So you can see uh, Shamsina is here, uh, Renuka is here, and then uh, Isra is here. So you can see the number of students. So now I have two, three, four, five. Five students are in this document, and you can see that their name is at the top right here. So you can see what is the engagement. And you, if you see what happens here, uh, your student is actually typing. So you can see, for example, Isora is typing a uh, bee spectacled man uh, flipping through a booklet. OK, then you see the one is telling Dell laptop. OK, and then um, here, even if your student don't put the name, you can actually see them typing. So if you see like, for example, purple color, I go and hover over. I know who is typing. Oh, Renuka is typing. So I go and hover my mouse here. A red color, I see. Oh, okay. Uh, lead one is typing. I take over the green one. I can see. Oh, Yi Fang is typing here, right? So this is a very nice um, way in how you can uh, literally engage your students in terms of uh, a simple activity like this. And then you can even uh, create more columns if you want. Okay, if you find that it's not enough uh, tables, then uh, you can even create uh, more tables. So you can see, for example. Uh, Shamsina is writing, okay, and then Yi Fang is writing, cracking head with assignment. So Li Luan says, flip chart, uh, Farida whiteboard, pink tumbler, pink tumbler. Oh, yeah, there's a pink tumbler here, okay. So Dell laptop has number 19. <laughs> okay, this is something very specific. Dell laptop has number 19 on it, okay. And then you have flip chart and all this, right. So this is what you can do. So imagine, uh, that you can do this exercise with your students um, where you can easily uh, create more, more, more uh, different, different types of activities. So you can even do this in PowerPoint, right? So in the same uh, feature in PowerPoint, for example, you even have the share. So you click the share, um, same way, upload it to OneDrive, and then you can share the link to them, right? So this is makes it a very interesting and you see it's very engaging and you can see some of our, our lectures are still typing their laptop flip chart polka dot bag right so there is a very engaging form of activity so you can even do this very simply and very easily very fast and uh, it doesn't require a lot of technical skill you just need a document open uh, with some uh, stimulus like this where you have a picture and then uh, this one and then I will always suggest uh, if you're going to invite large number of people to come and uh, edit a document, then is to give them uh, uh, a table, for example, that they, they have something to type. Otherwise, it's going to get very messy. What do you all think about this? Yeah, uh, you all think that this is uh, helpful? Um, this feature that we have here, is it is it helpful? Um, do you think that you will make our classrooms or make our engagement with our students much better? Or anyone has tried this before in, in any other class? Okay, so Rosie says, indeed, can use for ice breaking. Yes, absolutely. Okay, and then yes, yeah. So students actually like this. Huh? So uh, it can be useful if the class is small. Yes, but even if the class is big, uh, 
you can do that also, Isra. You just create a table. Uh, you just have 100 columns, right? Uh, and you can even do that because you have already uh, facilitated the learning. And you have already facilitated the learning. So if you don't have this table, uh, what is going to happen is um, everyone is going to type. Let's try this. Uh. Let's say now if I remove this table. Okay, so now can you all start uh, typing on top of it? Describe what you can see um, from this picture. Now I've removed the table. And you can see what happens that once we remove the table. Okay, so you can see removing the table means more, more will write at the same time. Uh, no, uh, removing the table means not more will write at the same time. Uh, removing the table means it's going to get messy. Let's say that, okay, you are writing here. I can also write at the same line here. See, I can also write at the same line here and, and uh, it's going to get pretty messy and uh, I do not encourage this uh, way. So it's good to make it a facilitated learning uh, where you create a table so the students know exactly uh, where to point and where to write. Otherwise, uh, it might get a bit messy here. So you can see, for example, some of our students are trying to type. So you have to put at the end of the sentence, click enter, and then you can start typing. Okay, put at the cursor at the end of the sentence, click enter, then you can start typing because it doesn't basically allow you to because somebody has already written here. So this is what I mean that it can get quite messy uh, where uh, and sometimes when it's like this, then students can get frustrated. OK, and, and they, they won't want to do it again. So it's always good to uh, put. So you see, for example, somebody is typing, testing, testing. So I can see who is typing. OK, Renuka is typing. OK, and then Go is also at the same sentence here. Okay, and then uh, Farida is also at this sentence, right? And you can see uh, Lin Wan is also here, right? So you can see, for example, uh, one of the things that Microsoft does is uh, there is a message here. To avoid conflicts, you cannot edit in this area until uh, Lin Wan unblocks and uploads. So you see, for example, here, right? You find it that it's quite difficult, uh, that it gets quite messy. So uh, I would always suggest that you have a table uh, where they know where exactly to type. Uh, so it doesn't get very messy. And uh, sometimes people just don't overwrite other people's work. Lah. OK, uh, so little one, yes, you're right. It's something like Google Doc. Uh, only thing is Google Doc, yeah, you have to open the Google Docs website and then you have to share the link and then they come in here. Uh, where else in this case, um, you can immediately share it uh, instead of going it uh, online, instead of going online and opening Google Docs by itself. Uh, here, you can straight away open a document and immediately share. OK, so the students who have a uh, 365 account, um, uh, Microsoft 365 account, they can immediately join uh, using the link that I just shared here. OK, any questions on this feature? Uh, you can do this in any of our office documents, Word, File, PowerPoint, Excel, any of this works. Okay, no questions here yeah, on this feature, yeah? Okay, now let's learn the next one. Okay, I'm going to close this. Next, I'm going to show you uh, a really cool feature. Okay, and then let me share this link in the chat. Hey, okay. no, sorry, not this one. Okay, I'm going to share this link, the chat here. You can click this link. Okay, now can you all click this link and see what is in there? So I'm going to share the screen. Okay, so now you can see that uh, there is a presentation that has been prepared here, right? So this is an example of Microsoft Suite. How to turn a teacher into a one-note ninja. So I created I created this Microsoft Suite. So you can see that how to turn a teacher into OneNote Ninja. So you can see that it's a very nice uh, presentation software. So this is where uh, I mentioned earlier when I taught my students about Microsoft Suite, 
uh, they have forgotten about Microsoft PowerPoint. They don't use PowerPoint anymore because they are so into Sway. They like Sway so much. And you see, what is a feature of Sway? It's very 3D-ish. Uh, it creates a very different uh, vibe and different feeling towards a presentation. So you can see, for example, the journey begins and you can pay, put a very large uh, picture and then you can put a, a text over a picture here and then there's uh, a lot of links here so you can click the links here and then here you can see there's a picture small and then there's a text here okay and then you can tilt the picture uh, a little bit and then here you can click and then you can go into a website and, and click it and, and read it very clearly you can easily integrate a uh, voice note into this you can put a voice note into this and then you can put a text that accompanies the voice note you can uh, uh, create it another text here that is extra large and then you have a pictures here you have uh, two three videos here uh, you can put all the videos easily and each of the videos have a caption so you can see the captions at the bottom of the videos okay and then you have some pictures here some pictures here uh, now this is another uh, pile of pictures where you can uh, flip through and it becomes like a like a flip cut uh, so you can flip it across like this right so and then you have all this so this is what we call uh microsoft suite all right so you can see that the presentation is so dynamic it's so 3 d and it's a top-down uh presentation so are you all interested to learn about this microsoft suite you want to explore what is microsoft suite in this workshop sure <laughs> only one person yeah <laughs> how about the rest the rest are not interested about Sway. <laughs> or oh, you already know about Sway uh, previously. Sure. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let's let's go through uh, Microsoft Sway. Yeah. So, um, yes, can, can. <laughs> oh, takes a long time to learn, huh, Israel? Okay. I, I was surprised you, actually. It's actually very, very easy very very easy and the reason of uh, using microsoft sway the idea is you spend time on the content rather than spend time on designing it ah uh, so it's actually not very complicated it's actually very easy to use so what you see here is something that is very complicated it's actually very very easy to use so sway is done in such a way that you spend more time on the contents uh, rather than on the format, the, the placing and all this. Okay, let me share a video with all of you. Let's 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 uh, look at this video, a very short video, and then you will get an idea um, how Microsoft Sway is used in the classroom. Okay, so let's look at this video. Uh, if it's too loud, uh, please uh, tune down your volume. If it's too low, then you can tune it up. Okay, this is a very short video. Um, this is a video of how Sway was used. Okay, and you can see how interesting it is. Let's see. The way that I would see success in using technology in schools goes beyond just using the technology. We've been in small bits trying to push out Office apps to students to be able to use. And it was a post online that I had seen that said, check out this new software. And it was Sway. A new, exciting, dynamic way to present information. You hear this little murmur in the background, like, I've never seen that. What is it? He's just sliding through. There's a video built in. And so there were a lot of just nuances to it that made it really exciting to share with others. It's a really powerful tool for synthesizing or comparing ideas because students have so much flexibility in the layout. It gives them a chance to individualize their thoughts and yet follow um, a curriculum base. We've used Sways for business. We've used Sways for English comp finals. In fact, we have a group of seniors, one group of seniors today that are delivering their thesis in Sway. Pretty much whenever I have an opportunity to use Sway for a presentation within class, I would definitely use Sway because it's my go-to. Just because it's so much easier to use than many other presentation software and because you can get things done so much quicker. I'm able to put together a presentation 
in maybe 30 minutes or an hour so I can really focus on my delivery rather than what people will be looking at on the screen because I know Sway's got it covered. That's the type of comment that we want to hear from students because then they're focusing more on content and they're learning that content because they're spending less time on the design. Having students share or collaborate on a Sway is so easy. We have shown it to students who have never used it before, and in minutes they're sharing with their peers and working together on the same active document. Well, I love that it's cloud-based, so I can access it from anywhere. I can pull it up on my phone from another computer. If my phone dies, I can use someone else's phone, someone else's computer. As we move towards one-to-one -to -one technology for our student population, Sway seems to provide that opportunity to stretch their thinking to use them and feel like it will give them an edge as they move into a college or university. Okay, so that is a little overview about how Microsoft Sway is used in the classroom, yeah? And um, it's a very, very easy application to use, yeah? So don't, so don't worry. <laughs> Um, let's go through together and again I will explore with you together yeah and we will and I encourage you for this part of the workshop let's do it together okay um so I'm gonna do this way and um, you do it together with me uh, with your own style and then uh, we will do the same topic uh, but you can do it your own style and then you share we will share each other's sway so I will show you how to share uh, the link in the chat and then we will see each other's sway yeah? and uh, we will see how and what we have done uh, for this morning. OK, so to activate Microsoft Sway, uh, same thing, you have to go to your Microsoft online. So go to your Microsoft online here. All right. Uh, how we went to Microsoft Teams is the same way how we go to Microsoft 365. OK, so just go to Google, type Microsoft online and then click the first link and put in your username and uh, password. Um, you will be able to come to this. If you have signed in before, then automatically you don't have to sign in anymore. You will come to this. So I'm going to click this uh, app launcher and then you click Sway, right? So if you don't have Microsoft Sway here, you can click all apps. Okay, click all apps and uh, Microsoft Sway will appear here. So you can see that it's arranged in alphabetical order. So it's easy for us, yeah? So I'm going to click Sway. Okay, so now you have Microsoft Sway here. Yeah? So I am going to put a uh, new blank suite. New blank suite. So I'm going to click new blank suite. Okay, so you have something like this. Now this is what we call a cut, a cut. A card is a uh, basically like a like a column la, a column. Uh, but in Microsoft Sway, they don't call it column, they call it card. Card. Okay. So the first card is we give a heading um to your card. Okay, so let's change this heading to who am I? Okay, let's do a general one uh, for all of us, and then we see each other's way. Yeah? Mine, you can see I'm doing now. So maybe you can do along with me and then we will share each other's way, okay? So who am I? Now you can bold it. Emphasize is bold it. Lah. I don't know why they give this a different name. Lah. In Microsoft Word, it's called bold, but here they put emphasize. And then here, the essence mean is italic. Lah. So I've already um, told them that it's best to standardize, but looks like they are not following. Lah. They, they like it this way. Never mind. Lah. We just follow whatever they put. Emphasize is bold, and then essence is uh, Italy, okay so now who am i okay so now i'm going to click this one this one background is basically you put a picture okay so who am i i'm going to put a picture here okay now here you can straight away search it's linked to the uh, uh bing bing google search so bing is under not Google search on it, bing search engine bing is under microsoft google is under google so Bing is also a search engine. So you don't have to go to Google, find an image or anything. But if you already have an image in your computer, that's fine. Otherwise, you can straight away search here. So I'm going to search who am I here. And then you can enter in your keyboard or you can press the magnifying glass. And then here you can see some pictures of 
um, who am I? Right. So let's see if I like this picture. I like this one. Now I am going to click add. Add. So you have who am I here? Okay. Then you have the uh, title and then you have the picture here. Okay. So now the next one I'm going to create is I'm going to create three more cards. Three more cards. So how to click three more cards? Click the plus sign. So heading one. One card. Now I'm going to click another card. Heading two. Another card. And then I'm going to click another card. So three. One, two, and three. Okay. So this is the main heading. Where am I? Then I got first card, second card, third card. Right? All right. So let's go to the first card. So the first card now, I am going to put where do I live? Okay, so where do I live? Then this one I'm also going to emphasize. Okay, now next one I am going to put what do I love? Okay, so you can put it. Okay, now the next one is here. I can put what have I learned? Simple, huh? so uh, what have I learned? Oh, yeah, this one I is supposed to be big. What have I learned? What do I love? Where do I live? Okay, so uh, title for each of the card. Okay, now beside the card, right, I am going to answer where do I live? So where do I live? So click, drag an image here. Okay, and now you can put where do I live? Hey, sorry, you don't put where do I live, huh? <laughs> no, no. You 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 put uh, maybe a picture of a house. You have a picture of your house or apartment. So maybe I'm going to put condominium. So you can search for a picture of a condominium. Now this is images, right? Now you want to make it interesting. You can even put a video, right? So two in one. Uh, there are two ways you can do this. One, you can make it. Uh, this image here, you can just put where do I live. Okay, example, yeah. Instead of putting it straight away, I'm going to put where do I live here. Okay, so there are some uh, pictures here. Okay, for example, you are here. Okay, I'm going to pick the picture. Now, under this, I can click a card here and then I can click an image. So that means it's a sub. It's a sub. Under the heading, I can click a sub here. So it's up to you, yeah, how you want to do, how creative you want it to be. All right, so I'm going to click image. Okay, where do I live? Now here you can put maybe uh, a section 17, Taning Jaya, for example. Okay, now this is where uh, you can maybe change this click this image and then maybe you can put a picture of a condominium uh, so instead of image i want to put a video so let me search for a video of a condominium so you got two tabs huh? images and condominium ah this one lah. okay so i add a video of a condominium here so at section 17 so video cut is a, a short video of my place. Okay, so now you have a video, a short video of my place. Okay, this one you can delete this card. Okay, so now you have where do I live? Okay, and you have a short video of my place at Taling Jaya at section, section 17. for example yeah so now you can see that here you have small medium and big so this indicates how big or medium or small you want the content so i'm going to put medium okay this is going to appear as a medium size in my presentation okay now next one what do i love okay so i'm going to put now what do i love what do i love 
So let's see what comes out. Okay, this one is a nice mark here. What do I love? Okay, now I'm going to add three pictures. So the first picture, what do I love? Okay, I love reading, for example. So now maybe you can put a picture of you love reading. So I'm going to put this here. And you can put I love reading. Okay, now the next one, I can put another card here. And I'm going to put maybe another one, burger. Ah, I love eating burger. Okay, very nice. This one, very a lot of burger picture here. So you can put a second one. Oops, too many. Really. So this one, I love reading. Okay, and then I love burger. Okay, now the next one, you can put another picture here. Okay, and then you can put, maybe I love my dog. Okay, so you can find a picture of your dog. For example, ah, this is not a dog. Exactly like my dog here. Okay, so now just remember that you have an emphasis, yeah? How big you want. So I'm going to put all this as medium. This is just medium and this is medium. But since all this tree falls under this category of what do I love, I want to um, lump them together so I can like do a flip. I can do a flip like an album. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to put tick here. Tick this and then click this. I'm going to tick this and then I'm going to click this and tick this. So you can see that it is all now tick. Okay. And it's going to be like an album it's going to come out as an album okay so now you're done with this all right now the next one i have what do i love so this is thick this is thick this is also thick okay so now next one i am going to go uh what have i learned okay what have i learned Okay, so there's lessons learned here. Okay, so I'm going to put the uh, next emphasis here, heading. Or maybe I'm going to put a text here. I have learned about Microsoft Sweet. It is a really cool software to use. Okay, I have learned about Microsoft Sway. It is a really cool software to use. Okay, so now you have, uh, what have I learned? And here, you can put who am I? Now, I can even add here uh, a text. Okay, and then you can uh, put, uh, for example, an explanation. I am Patoni uh, Adams. I, I work at the... Uh, University of Malaya. Okay, I love my job. Okay, for example, yeah. Okay, so now you see I've I've actually created a simple sway. I created a simple sway. So how does it look like in presentation mode? So you can click play, play. Then this is how it looks like. So um, one of our lecturers was concerned, Isra, say it's going to take a long time uh, for me to learn. Yeah, but you can see, for example, uh, who am I? So you have like, for example, and then you have the text, where do I live? Okay, then you have a video here, and then you have a caption here at the bottom here. Okay, Isra, you have to leave, yeah? Okay, okay, no problem. Okay, and then here, what do I love? And then you see, for example, I love reading, I love burger. Okay, then I love my dog. And then lessons learned. What have I learned? I le have learned about Microsoft Sway. It's a really cool software to use. So you can see that how easy it is to create a Microsoft Sway. So now if I click edit here, 
Um, and if I go to design, if I go to design, right? Now, if I go to design, and then if I click styles, if I go to design and I click styles, now you can even change it from vertical to horizontal. So you can go from left to right. So this now was top down. Now this is left to right. Okay. And you can even transform it into slide mode. So you want it to be in slide mode. You can even transform it into slide mode. Okay. So now, for example, I want it to be vertical. Now you have many different styles. Yeah. You can even click this and you can see that it changes the whole thing. I can even click this and it changes into different color, for example. And then I have a, a backdrop at the at the back. So you see it comes up with a different pattern here. So many, many different options for you. But let's say that uh, you see suddenly it becomes so nice. Huh? Everything, everything is designed for you. But let's say that if you are really tight for time, uh, you already have very limited time and you want uh, 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 you don't have very little time in terms of selecting this option and all this. Um, what you can do is you can click remix, remix. So click remix, and you can see that Microsoft Sway automatically designs the presentation for you. So you can see that it arranges for you nicely in terms of the the layout in terms of the font size, the font color. And if you don't like this, you can still click Remix and it will come up with another design for you. So each time you click Remix, a new design comes out. So you see like this is another new design. I click Remix, another new design comes out. I click Remix, another new design comes out. So now if you click Play, so you will see that your Sway looks something like this. See, so nice. And then you can play the video straight from here. Okay, and then you have a caption here and then like this, it looks something like this, it looks something like this and lesson over. So you see, it's so nice and so interesting way to create a presentation. So now I want to share this presentation to all of you. How to do it? I can click share. Okay, and then here I can put anyone with a link. Anyone with a link can view. Okay. View. Don't put edit. Ah. Then other people can edit your presentation. <laughs> put view. Anyone with a link, view, and then copy. Okay, now I go to the chat and I put the link there. So now when you click that link, you are able to view my Microsoft Suite. So this is how easy it is to do a Microsoft Suite. So you want to go back to your storyline. You want to edit. Click storyline and you are able to edit this here. Okay, so this is about Microsoft Suite, right? So any of you have managed to do it? Uh, Microsoft Suite, can you share your your link here in the chat? Maybe we can see what have you done for Microsoft Suite? Do you all manage to create your own Suite? You can share it, uh, the link, go to share, and then anyone with a link, view, copy, and then you can share it into the chat. Oh, go. So uh, that is very uncommon, yeah, uh, because uh, it's a cloud base. It's a cloud base. So maybe you have to change your antivirus setting. Uh, it does not have any virus because it's under Microsoft. It's a cloud based program. OK, so anyone has done their Microsoft Sway, you can share the link here. Then we can also take a look. Or you all have any questions on Microsoft Sway, you can ask now as well. Any questions on uh, Microsoft Sway or anyone wants to share what they have done? Okay, none, yeah? No, 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 no questions, yeah? Uh, okay. Any, is there any good YouTube on uh, teaching Sway? Yes, I can also share. 
but this is uh, basically whatever is on the uh, YouTube. Uh, Dr. Lee is, uh, Dr. Ng is the same thing. Uh, they're going to teach more or less the same thing as this. So the idea is for you to uh, focus on the content rather than uh, worry about the layout, the format, the, the presentation and all this. I can give you some samples of good sway. So one of the links I gave you is about the OneNote Ninja. Uh, this one, this link I'll share again. Uh, this is a some sample of um, sway as well. Okay, so you can click that and take a look at that. Okay, so is there any other questions you all have? Um, otherwise, we can uh, wrap up the workshop for today. Uh, any questions at all in, not just wait, any questions at all in terms of Microsoft uh, 365 education apps? Yeah, uh, Renika, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Dr. Doni, you showed us just now you, you can flip your the, the cards and all that. How do you do that? Okay, in terms of flipping the cards, okay. So one of the things that you can do is you can go to uh, design, okay, and then you can remix the thing. And usually the remix, it depends on the pattern, yeah? The pattern, how you can, okay, like this, for example, is coming out individually. So what you can do is, okay, let me go to what do I love? Okay, so I'm going to click this. Okay, I'm going to click this and I'm going to click this. Okay, and then let me, you see the option called group. Group. So you already take the three pictures, right? One, two, three. Group. Okay, now when you click group, you will have stack and then you have grid. Now you have a slideshow. So I'm going to put stack. Okay, so that means it's done. So now if I play, and I go down to my pictures earlier. There you see, it comes out like this. One, two, three. And uh, this is stack. So you want to make it bigger, then it, it becomes like this. So you see, it's quite small here. So if I want to make it a, a bigger stack, then I have to click uh, the pictures here. So you have this, okay? It's already grouped together. So you can see group stack. So you see, I make it bigger. Make this bigger. Okay, and then I play. And then here, if I go down, uh, then it becomes much bigger. So you click this, click this, click this. So it's nice, lah. Huh? So you can you can talk about it. All right. So like, well, what what do I love? Uh, so you can flip this. Really cool, right? <laughs> okay. Is there anything else? Not the Okay, yeah. Huh? This one, ah. Huh? The yeah yeah. Stack. Okay. Thanks. All right. No problem. Is there any other questions? Okay, no, no other questions, yeah? All right, I think if there's no other questions, then uh, I've uh, finished uh, the workshop for today. Um, so um, over to the organizer now, uh, Ms. Umu and Ms. Linda. Um, I'm over the the workshop is over yeah so um over to you now okay so thank you everyone uh, for joining this workshop uh, I hope that uh, it was useful for you and I hope that you are able to use uh, Teams um, Sway and uh, OneNote well yeah so if you have any questions uh, please feel free to uh, email me and if you have any difficulties feel free to email me and I will help you along the way as well okay. Okay, uh, who's Ah, Dr. Doni, um, Ms. Felinda and Ms. Umu tak ada, dia ada Eudora and everything, so... Okay. Uh, tak apa lah. So, minta uh, isi okay. feedback form and... Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, uh, there's a survey form, yeah? Yes. Um, so, can I ask uh, your help? Uh, there is two links here, uh, one is on Facebook, the other one is on uh, WhatsApp. And uh, maybe uh, let me share this also for your convenience. So there is a attendance form and there's a feedback form. Uh, can you help to complete this, please? Uh, because it's quite important for their documentation. Thank you, Dr. Ni. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, you everyone. everyone. Bye. Happy experimenting. <laughs> this is fun. Okay, bye bye. So many tweets. Maybe we have a copy of the recording. Ah, can can can. They will. Ah, uh, Husari. Ah, uh, how the copy uh, recording? Recording. Um, uh, kita orang akan post eh uh, dekat YouTube edit ah. Oh, this is on YouTube edit ah. Okay. Oh okay. <laughs> my gosh. Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh. alright. So you can get it from YouTube edit ah. Alright. Okay, thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.